Hi everybody, my name is Ixi, and in this video I'm going to explore the magical harmony of everything in its right place from Radiohead's Kid A. Because when I first heard this song 20 years ago, it was just instant adoration, and that hasn't changed since. There's a part in this song that never fails to make my eyes well up, and I love to figure out why I cry. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the chord progression and the harmonies and how they create emotional tension and relief. I'm also gonna talk about how without a very simple but powerful arrangement choice, everything would not be in its right place. And I'm also gonna talk about the ambiguous tonal center, or the key. Well, I am far from being the first person to analyze the harmony of this song, and one of the hot topics of discussion is the tonal center, or the key. In a lot of mainstream music, it takes mere seconds to figure out what the key of a song is. This one, it's really not clear, and I think it's largely a matter of interpretation. It just depends on what angle you're looking at it from. I think the lyrics are similar in that way, where it sort of depends on how you interpret them, what their meaning is. The key is not just the sharps and flats. The key is the tonal center of the song. This is the note or the chord where everything sounds finished and complete, like the end of a sentence. It's where everything sounds the most resolved and the most stable. Other chords and notes in the song create varying levels of tension that want to pull you back to the tonal center. You can imagine that emotionally this has an impact on us. We get a great sense of relief and certainty from hearing something return to the tonal center. Similarly, we might feel feelings of excitement or anxiety or poignant beauty when we feel tension pulling us away. At first the song sounds like it's in C something, and then it sounds like it's in F something, and then back to C, and then back to F. And the reason I'm saying something is because it's not major or minor. Here's what the chorus would sound like in C major. But here's what it really sounds like. there are four chords that are being used in different combinations to create three different chord progressions in the song. We have C major with a C on top, we have a D flat major seven, and we have an E flat at six. We also have a F major going to C to D flat major seven to E flat at six. And lastly, my favorite, we have a D flat major seven going to C to E flat add six and ending on a D flat major seven. There's a C on top of every single chord, and this is the arrangement choice that I was talking about. This C is what's creating the tension in two out of the four chords. So in the first chord, C is the chord, so C fits into the chord very nicely. It's just an octave above the root of the chord. But in this chord, that would just be a D flat major chord, we have a C on top and that creates tension and that sounds kind of jazzy. That's because jazz uses a lot of chords with extensions. There's so much tension in this chord just by itself. It's created by a major seventh sort of encasing everything. Then the next chord is an E flat chord with an added sixth. And that creates tension as well because there's a major second now which is a very tense interval, but very bright, very pleasing. And it also means the sort of the encasing of this chord is a sixth, which is very consonant, but unstable sounding. Not like a fifth. Doesn't it feel kind of like it's reaching somewhere or it's not sure where it wants to go? So that is what makes those two chords so tense is keeping the C on top. And then we have an F major chord, which has really no tension. In fact, that feels like the least tense chord in the bunch. So there are a few reasons why I think that the song sounds like it's in C at first. The first chord progression that we hear only has the C major, the D flat major seven, and the E flat add six. 
Out of the bunch, the C major chord is the most resolved. It sounds stable, it's a full triad, and there's no tension inside of the chord. So that sort of feels like it has the most gravitational pull. Another reason is that C is the common tone in all the chords, right? C is in every single chord. Not always, but for the most part, his melodies are organizing around C. <laughs> That common tone gives us something consistent to hold on to. And the last reason is that the runs that sort of happen before we get to the C major chord sound like they're tonicizing C. And that's a process I can explain better in another video, but essentially they're drawing our ear towards C sounding like the tonal center. How do we reconcile how final and resolved everything sounds when it goes up to F major? Plus, this is the part where I would consider it the refrain, the chorus, where he's singing, everything, everything. There's a brightness to this. There's a certainty to it. There's a strength to it. So that combined with some other things about functional harmony, it really sounds like F is actually our tonal center until we go back down to C. You could so easily argue that the entire song is actually in F mixolydian flat six or some kind of F mixed modality of both major and minor chords. And that's a really strong argument. In fact, I almost went with that one, except I just kept feeling like, mm, but C. There is a really dramatic sound between a major five chord and a major flat six chord there's a half-step motion that happens. And that gives it kind of this Spanish sound. Another subject matter for a different video would be, why do half-step resolutions sound so satisfying to us? So yeah, it could be an F the whole time. You could argue that it's just sort of avoiding the tonic. I would make that a five to a four to a flat six scale degree, instead of where it sounds a lot like a one to a flat seven to a flat two. And that's why I get this Phrygian feeling from it. Anyway, again, it's all up to interpretation. Regardless, I love the contrast between how bright it sounds when he's going everything versus in its right That feels darker, like there's a change of mood there, there's a change of heart, and yet it still does feel like we are in the right place. This feels good to be here. In its right place, in its right place. Everything just kind of locks into place. Now there are some additional harmonies that happen in the second half of the song that I absolutely love. As the song builds progressively, these harmonies start to come in and they come in by way of the sort of mangled vocal sample of Tom singing. First, singing up high with Tom on the F for everything. I messed those chords up, but I like them a lot, so I'm gonna keep them. So we now have an E flat up top, and that's not creating any sort of new harmonies. But listen what happens when we resolve to the F major chord. Ah. Uh. <laughs> it's a bold, kind of sassy, sort of edgy, chord, it's usually functioning as a dominant chord to bring us back to one, but this is one. So like I said, it's not functioning as a dominant chord, it's just being dissonant for kicks. And I love the tension created by the minor seventh from the top to the bottom. Oh, and 
I forgot to mention that we still have the no 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 in the left channel. So we got this major second happening. Just crunchy, jazzy chords. And then this E flat becomes an E natural right before we get to the second part of the chorus, which creates sort of this lift back to C. And it's very dissonant for just a moment, which I really like, and it only happens once. So it's like. Yet another reason why it sounds like we're in C. That G is the fifth in the C scale, which is a very stable, important, gravitationally strong point in the scale. That's the second degree in F, and it doesn't sound like we're in F because of that. So during the last verse, when he's singing, there are two colors in my head, things start to feel like they're building to something. This chord progression for this part of the verse is really tense. There is no real feeling of resolution in the verse, and I'll tell you why. It's because the chord progression starts with a D flat major seven chord and ends with a D flat major seven chord, only briefly going to the C major chord, sort of just on the way. <laughs> So it's just cycling endlessly. This verse is twice as long. So the tension is building and building and he's just leaning on that seven. Okay, so now is my favorite part. <laughs> We're finally there. And that's when the vocal sample comes back in, hits the E flat and sort of oscillates between the E flat and the F. And it's kind of doing its own thing rhythmically, but it doesn't matter. We're hearing both of those pitches. It's really the E flat that's getting to me, and that is creating this chord. I swear to God, that just makes me feel emotional just hearing the chord all by itself with nothing else around it. Like that makes life worth living, that chord. And that is a D flat major nine chord. <laughs> oh. Basically third stacked upon third stacked upon thirds. Just these extensions and extensions and extensions. And it just feels like it's constantly reaching for something that it never gets to. So there's that feeling of yearning that's never resolved. So beautiful. <laughs> God, that is just beautiful too. Look at that. <laughs> oh, so yeah, when it goes up to the F, that's creating an E flat major nine chord. So we got these nine chords happening. A ninth by itself is an interval I absolutely love. It's just so beautiful, I can't handle it. And this is the climax of the song, essentially. This is building and building and building. Try to say... to say. And finally, we resolve to the F major, and it feels like the end, even though the song continues for a bit and there's definitely an outro, we have reached the climax and are coming down from it. And that peak is resolving to what feels like the most strong tonic, the F major. And so try to say, because before, try to say, it feels pained. It feels like he's getting more and more desperate, more and more confused. And this, uh, 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 you know, it just starts to feel like chaotic in a beautiful way. And then try to say, try to say. Like it was just too complicated and it was just too much. It was overwhelming and now it's simple. Now it's clear. And this gives way to the outro, which is pretty much just thirds for the most part. And it sounds like this.
What I like about this is that we're left with just the major quality of these chords. So it sounds almost overly bright, and overly cheery, a little bit like a video game. I had to. So that's it for this video. And if you'd like to hear my thoughts on the strange timing of this song, you can click on the video somewhere here on the screen. And as always, if you like this video, please like it, subscribe, and all that jazz. See you next time.